I've got this player, we've got to do something with this boy, I'm telling you. Listen, this is my business. Uh, I can't let anyone put me in a position um, that I could be, you know, accused of something that I wasn't doing. Um, no, 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 I'm not, no, I'm always by the phone, mate. I'm uh, going back. I'm going back home, so I'll, I'll be there. So just, just, just call me. Tony Parachute is passionate about his business. He lives and breathes it. He's a football agent, which allows him to combine work with play. This is the new home of football. Emirates Stadium, Ashburton Grove. This is what we've turned into. This is what we've become. How can you not love this place? It's just amazing, this place. Wow. One of the best stadiums in the world. Missing one thing, a trophy, but anyway. While most Arsenal fans will share his hopes of silverware, Tony also dreams of doing a deal with them. Uncovering the next Jack Wilshere or Oxalade Chamberlain. Because he's a football agent, specialising in discovering young talent and guiding them through the sticky territory of contracts and transfer deals. All right. At P4P um, Sports Management, we don't do things for our benefit, for the agent's benefit. We work for our players. So we, we look at everything in their interest. If it's in their interest to move on, then we, we assist in that, we do that. If it's in their interest to stay at a particular club for the duration of their, their career, could be financial, could be, could be footballing, it could be family reasons, whatever. If the player's happy, then we fulfil that obligation. We, at p for p our philosophy is um, the players aren't our players. We, uh, they don't work for us. We work for them. So we do anything and everything to keep our player happy. He pays the bills at the, at the end of the day. I'm his, effectively, I'm his employee. So we do everything in, 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 in we try and do everything in his benefit. Kulas. It's the January transfer window, one of Tony's busiest times of year. And yeah, where there's true. a phone, there's a deal to be discussed. You're, you've been in this business a hell of a lot longer than I have, and you know how many times clubs say, yeah, yeah, he's in our future plans for the summer, um, mm. and then a million and one other players come on, and, you know, it, it, but the player goes. So I want to try and keep him at the forefront of their thoughts, especially after, the, obviously after this window closes, um, yeah. with a view to them possibly going down to see him, or, you know, that, you know, that, that type of thing. So I want to yeah. sort of formulate something with, with you as to working out what the best sort of tactic is to keep them on, on board. Tony has been a football agent since he got his licence almost four years ago. The players on his books are mainly between the ages of 18 and 21 and are at clubs like Pauk Salonika in Greece and Ajax in Holland. We weren't going to do sod all this window. Um, but we, we've moved the boy from Ajax to NEC Nijmegen on loan. Nijmegen, from Ajax to NEC. Yeah, we moved him on loan um, because he, he needs a bit more profile and a bit more game time. It was, it's good, it's good, it was good for Ajax and good for NEC and good for the boy. Um, so it's, I mean, it's, not, it's not with a view to a permanent move. It's just, you know, they want him to get a bit more game time. Um, so that was good, That's what, you know, and we were quite happy just to do that. Um, but a few other things have sort of cropped up and you never know, we've got another three, four days, whatever's left. So we might sneak one uh, under the wire. One of the frustrating things about this business is when um, other agents or, or associates of yours um, give you players to try and move and don't give you the required uh, information. A lot of people operate differently um, and especially people from South America, uh, mainly South America, but Africa and stuff like that, they expect you, because that's how it works over there, they expect you to have an in with a club um, and just a phone call will get a player a trial. 
and it's hard for them to understand that it doesn't, especially in Europe and Northern Europe, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Um, you know, we have to build a profile of a player. We have to gain interest in a player if the player is not known or chased by that club, especially if they're younger. Um, we have to, you know, build interest in him. Uh, some instances, and I've got a friend, as I said, in South America. He sent me, um, he, he had uh, a player that came to uh, a club in the UK um, through another intermediary, uh, an intermediary, uh, a broker, in fact. Um, not an agent, just someone that's well known to the management uh, of that particular club. Uh, and he was able to get this boy in on, on, on a trial. Um, boy was a good, good player. Um, they couldn't cut a deal wherever um, at, at the club. And he moved on and he went on to another, another major European club. Um, so along this sort of conversation, this guy offered me a player, sent me his profile after much badgering, uh, still not understanding that I can't actually pick up the phone to the president of X, Y and Z club and say, just take this player, because it doesn't work like that. Um, and it was just basically a piece of paper with the guy's name on, his age, a few statistics, and I had to work on that. We need a history of the player, we need what he can do, what club he was at, some video links, uh, and then we can approach a club and try and put him in somewhere. South America operates slightly differently. There's a lot more underhand things that go on. Um, there's a lot of brokers involved, not just, as I said, not just, they're not agents, they're brokers who have the ear uh, of the hierarchy at a particular club and will take a player on on their say-so because there's money involved in it. Just there, there's big super agents in, in this game, uh, but there's also people that we refer to as brokers. In other words, they're not licensed agents, they're not football consultants, um, they're not scouts, they've just got the ear of influential people. And in some cases, in some major clubs across Europe and the world, you have to go through these people um, to get your player in. It's nothing underhand or untoward or anything like that. It's just that they've got the ear of the president, the president or technical director or whoever it is, um, listens to them and is advised by them. Um, whether there's you know, money in it for everyone, I can't say, probably. Um, and you have to go through them to get, to get a deal done. You know, a lot of people think it's the agent that goes and approaches a club. Some of the major deals that have happened recently it's not, it's not the agent, it's a broker getting involved, saying, look, I've got X club, does your player want to move? I'll put the two together, everyone's happy. And that's, that's what's happening, and it's, it happens a lot. Um, brokers are unregulated, I'm not saying they're un, you know, anything underhand, but they're a, sort of a law unto themselves, they can do what they want, but they're valuable, everyone uses them if they have to. Yeah, all right. Εντάξει, anyway, so μιλά του πάω, αυτό είναι το βασικό τώρα. Μιλά του πάω, πέντου uh, το έχουμε, δεν, δεν είναι πρόβλημα. Μόλι επιστρέψω στο, στο γραφείο, θα στο, θα στο στείλω αμέσω. Tony does a lot of his business with sides in Greece, where his family roots lie. He grew up in a traditional North London Greek family, just a stone's throw away from Arsenal's old stadium at Highbury. The, the living room and then the dining room, which we weren't allowed in. A typical Greek thing, the, li the, di the living room here had, you know, like in my big feet, my big Greek fat wedding, whatever, had covers on it. Yeah, yeah, all the plastic covers. <laughs> yeah. And when the guests came, they were, yeah, class, mate. Right there. See, that's, that's ours. I remember that there. That's a Greek thing. That's a, I don't know what it's called in English. It smells. Like uh... Most Greek then, most Greek houses would have something like, like that at the front because it smells really nice. Yeah. Every Wembley Cup final, as soon as, as, soon as the, the final ended, it's football. All the boys would come football. <laughs> used to use, yeah, we used to put cones down and stuff like that. We used to play football here, this is where the football skills were honed. <laughs> <laughs> if it were, oh dear. It wasn't for the war. <laughs> right, να το σκεφτούμε λογικό. Αυτό το, το, το χαρτί, αν το απογράψει ο, 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 ο παίχτη, μα δίνει άδεια να μιλήσουμε για τον παίχτη στον Πάοκ. Οκ. Okay? Right. Και από, α, από εκεί, 
ε, αν, αν κάνουμε τη, ε, την πράξη, ε, ε, εμείς δηλαδή πριν να κάνουμε την πράξη θα τους πούμε, ναι, αυτό έχουμε την άδεια να μιλήσουμε για τον παίχτη, ο παίχτης θέλει τάδε, 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 τάδε και εμείς θέλουμε τάδε από εσά. Αν μας πούνε ο Πάου, εντάξει, no problem, εντάξει, καλεμένοι είμαστε. Yeah. Αν, α, περίμενε, αν μας πούν, αν μας πούν ο ΠΑΟΚ, αν μας πούν, δεν σας πληρώνουμε εμείς, πρέπει να κυνηγήσετε τον παίχτη σας, με χωρίς να υπογράψει το δεύτερο, δουλεύουμε για την καλοσύνη του. Tony's had a tough day and his latest deal is proving difficult. I've done at least six different contracts and three other additional separate mandate amendments, in other words, another contract. Um, the player, not so much wasn't happy with us, but didn't want certain things revealed to the club regarding commission, um, which is fine. Um, but we were trying to always protect our interests, A, in the player, and B, uh, obviously, to get, to, to get paid. So it's been a complete and utter mess. Um, through lack of proper communication, uh, not from our side, but anyway. Um, so I've done a lot of uh, typing and faxing, uh, sorry, uh, scanning and emailing today. Uh, also, my colleague doesn't really know how to use the internet very well. <laughs> so we've had a lot of uh, necessary emails backwards and forwards. Anyway, so that, that was one side of it. Another day and another bit of business for Tony. This time, it's not football related. Research reveals that only 41% of agents work full time in football. Tony's no different. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. His other job is being an estate no, agent. Two, two girls sharing. They're constantly overlapping. Um, and I've had to take a backward step in my property because I've taken a conscious I've taken a conscious decision to con to concentrate and try and build up the football side because that's where I want to be you can marry the two you can work alongside the two but you know anything I, that I do I'd like to be successful mm. so you can't really be successful you can't really devote all your energies to both a hundred percent so something has to give eventually I would like to get into a position where I don't have to rely on the estate agency. You know, you're pretty full on 24 hours a day. On the football side, Tony's job is not only looking after his own clients, but also scouting for new talent. Hello, my name is Clyde, I'm 13 years old and I play football. After the financial collapse in Greece, Clyde moved to London with his family. He used to play at the academy of Greek giants Olympiakos and after arriving in the UK, was put in touch with Tony. FA rules state that agents can't officially represent a player under 16, and even then they have to have parental consent. But for under 16s, free advice and guidance can be given with a view to a more formal relationship in the future. How has Tony helped you? Um, he, put to, he put me into some academies so they can see how, how I play and yeah. And if you ever went uh, signed for a contract, would you have Tony as your agent? Yeah. yeah. Um, he was put in contact with Tony as, a, as an agent through people over there, which, which was the right decision because Tony's very good like that. He can really help the boy. Um, and he asked me if uh, we could take him to a few places and introduce the boy and whatever. We, we, he was at Brentford, Clyde. Um, and Brentford have been dragging their feet with the boy a little bit, um, purely because he's very much a technical European type player. And when you play at the league levels of, say, Brentford, they like a good old English fashioned push and run player. Um, for that, you need to have strength. And Clyde is more technical than strength. So we thought we could put our heads together with the parent and um, we decided to put him into our, our team, our grassroots team, which is playing at playing at the top level that they're, uh, they're able to play. We play Red Division football, which is like playing Premiership football. So he's at a very good level. He's playing a year above himself. He's playing with my under-14s instead of my under-13s. And um, we're working on the strength side of his game 
and he's he's played five or six games for us now and every game we can actually see him developing the strength side of his game so the plan that we've put in progress is working um, and then obviously the clubs are still monitoring him um, probably looking to put him back into an academy of some sort by middle of next season um, but in the meantime we've got a job to do with the boy hey! But not everyone agrees. Some youth coaches take issue with agents being involved at such a young age. Yeah, I've seen players with agents. I've seen players being approached by agents. Uh, I don't really see... I guess if I was an agent, I wouldn't be saying this, but from a footballing point of view, if you've got parents who are involved in your football, if you've got friends and families and uncles, then technically you don't really need to have an agent involved. You can have someone look after you who is a bit closer to you. So if you had a coach that coached you from age of eight, maybe 16, you could maybe go to them for advice and they could look after you in the future. The nature of the of football at the moment, it's when you're going to the top level of clubs, it's a business. To them it's a business. To a parent, you're dealing with their, their most valuable commodity, their, pet, their child. So yes, if the, cl the clubs are advised by professionals, they've got their lawyers, they've got their contracts that they put out, and they, Everything is done to suit the club, so why not the players? The players need to know what their rights are, what their rights are not, because they can. The way the rules are, the laws of the game, the laws of uh, the game, it's very easy for players to get sidetracked and just to go with the flow with the clubs. Whether the agents are at the forefront, I, I've known Tony for years, as I said to you, and Tony doesn't walk into a place and say, "I'm the agent, I'm this, I'm that." It doesn't do it like that. He advises the family, we sit down, have a conversation with the boy, advise the boy and just generally push them into the right direction. And hopefully things progress. As the boy progresses in football, then so, so does uh, Tony's role. Interesting. That's my day.